Welcome back. As you can see, I've dived onto the actual uh, device itself here, information within the portal, and we're now ready to log on to the actual machine. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to SSH to root at, at 159, 159.8.214.6. I'm going to paste in our actual, because I grabbed it from down there, our actual password. So there we have it. We're on the machine. Um, first things first, do a YUM update. Now I did log in on this machine earlier on. I've done a YUM update, but I just thought I'd point it out because it's it's well worth doing that to be sure. Um, so there's our YUM update. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to be doing IP tables and in tutorial 20, I wrote a whole load of scripts progressively building up the actual security on our virtual machine or in that case on our VBOX machines on my local network here. This time we're in the cloud so we've got to be a little bit more careful now but that was the other reason for developing the scripts on our test bed. So how do we get those scripts over onto this system uh, which we've newly instanced um, from where they are? Well where are they? They're in GitHub. So we can download them from GitHub. Um, and how do we do that? Well, if you've never used GitHub before, um, what we can now do, because I know we put all the scripts on GitHub, is we can now do a yum install git. And once we've got git, we can now do what they call fork the code by cloning the actual code that I've put on GitHub. How do we do that? Well, it's as simple as, once you've got git on there, you go git clone, https colon oops, s colon slash slash github.com my name because it's in my area and it was in the directory ip tables it's that simple and there we go it's that quick as well given it was a small amount of code as well in fairness um if we cd in it ip tables and we do an ls there's our scripts, fully executable, all ready. So we're ready to rock and roll now and do some actual uh, work to augment those scripts and change them. So what do we need to do first? Well, first we need to take account of our IP addresses. And we need to remember that ETH0 is the private, that's our private, and ETH1 is our public. So you need to take a record of those. So what I'm going to do is on my Mac here, I'm simply going to make a screenshot. And I'm going to grab those so we know what they are. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's now done a screenshot. <coughs> oh, sorry. Excuse me. Best laid plans. Um, that's now done a screenshot of the IP addresses and the net mask, so we've got those, we know what we're doing, and I now need to know what my IP address is externally, because that's going to be the allowed host. So again, if I drag this down here and I go, my IP, whenever you do that, it will return you your public IP address. So in this case, again, I will take a screenshot of that. So now I've got a record of that. So I know exactly what I'm doing now. I go back in here, oops, if I go back into my terminal, um, I've got my public address, which will be my allowed host, and I've got my private and my public address um, for my virtual machine in software. So we're ready to start changing the scripts. So I'm going to pause it there uh, and keep this portion of it so that we know where we are, and join me in a second. Um, where we will actually go in and edit the scripts. Okay, so the other thing that we want to do is while we're in here, I'm going to get rid of the web uh, portal now. In fact, no, I'm not. I want to bring that back. Uh, I want to go back in here and I want to get access to Sassify Vault, which I've just done. So I've logged on in this window here. 
So again, I just SSH'd in into this machine. And can I pin the 159.8. Um, 214.6, so I was just looking at the picture there. Yes, of course I can. Can I ping it on its private address? Now, I shouldn't be able to do this um, unless I've got VLAN spanning enabled, which I disabled earlier. So that's fine, that's what I wanted to see. Now I'm gonna leave that hanging there because I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna to go to network, um, it's under network, IP management, VLANs. And I'm going to turn on VLAN spanning. Now, you may not be able to do this because this is very binary. It's either all on or it's all off. It's all off at the moment, so my private VLANs can't talk to each other. I'm going to turn them on. That takes about five to ten minutes to enable that. So that's all I wanted to do on that one. So I've got that's still hanging there and once once it's enabled that will start pinging um, and I'll see it on my screen so I've just shoved it off to the side there. So what do we want to do and the reason for that is obviously I want to be able to show that we can SSH in from Sassify um, Vault here into our new IP test IP tables machine as well as being able to come in externally so I want one more terminal window now and this one is just going to be my plain old Mac so if you can remember it is Eamon's iMac IP or sorry test IP tables and Sassify Vault so those are our three hosts two of which are in software one externally um, if I pin the external IP address 8.214.6, um, of course we can ping it. And why can we ping it from both of those machines on the external address? Well, if we do an IP tables, minus L, they're all there. Except, 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 except. There they are. Um, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm actually going to run Total Lockdown, just to show you. Um, I know we haven't had a look on it at we haven't had a chance to have a look at pinging it on the private IP address, but I just want to show you if you make a mistake and you accidentally run you know IP tables uh, minus L and then we do a more uh, total lockdown, it's going to flush those tables and run those three commands save the IP tables and restart it. So it's going to change that policy that we have into drops. And once they're dropped, they're dropped. There's no way of getting back in. So I'm actually going to run total lockdown. And that will basically just hang me like it has done. That's it now. There's, there's nothing else. This is going to connection break in a second and drop us back to my Mac. Um, and there's no way back in. That machine, unless you get to the console, is now not accepting anything anymore from anywhere. So there you go. Broken pipe. And we're out. We're out of there. We can't even ping this machine anymore because, of course, it's now dropping packets, just like we saw. So that's how easy it is to get it wrong and end up in a terrible situation. So how do you resolve that? Well. If we go back to the portal and we go back to devices in your device list, and it's probably worth us doing this, um, and my apologies if people have done this many a time, then you know, then it really doesn't, it, it's not helping you that much. There's no point in rebooting uh, because we've saved the IP table setup. So what we have to actually do is go onto the machine and actually reload the OS. Um, reloading the OS takes about six minutes and you can get it from here OS reload so we go OS reload warning warning danger it'll destroy all your data and then the good news is we haven't done anything on this machine other than a quick yum update and then a, a yum install of git and then we got cloned over our files so I'm not losing that much work OS reload Reload the above configuration. It'll ask again to confirm. So 
So just double check you're doing it on the system that you want to do it on. You know, but it's going to, you know, please back up all the data. Next. Yet another confirmation. So you can see software is helping you out here. It's, it's being very, <laughs> you absolutely sure you want to do this. So you've got to click multiple times that you're absolutely sure. And then your final warning with red and gives you your device name, test IP tables. So in case I'd accidentally clicked on, on Sassify, um, no, it's this host and it's going to reload it, confirm. It tells you it'll take a minimum of 46 minutes. My experience, it generally takes no more than 10 um, to get it back. So off it goes. We will see now on our device list, it's doing stuff. OS reload. Cloud instance OS reload, you can see there. So off it goes to do that. Give that a few minutes. Once it's back, we'll do our yum update again. And we'll do our... Uh, Yum install and grab our script. So I just wanted to show you, it is that easy to lock yourself out. Um, so we will have to be careful doing this. The good news is I'll get the same Ethernet addresses that we had before. So I've made a note of them now um, into Notepad here, just so I've got them and my external IP address. And as soon as it comes back up, we will uh, dive back in and we'll have a new password, of course, because it's an OS reload. Um, we'll dive back in and get going on actually using the script. Join me in a sec. Back, back up and running. That took all of six minutes. So it wasn't very long at all in terms of the amount of time it took to uh, get going again. I'm just going to grab my uh, terminal back up. Whoops. I've got so many terminal windows up now. I don't know which is which. Um, This one, that's what I want. Um, we're going to go back into it again now. I have the new, ah, yeah, you may get this. Uh, you've got to VI the um, DOS SSH slash known host file down the bottom, get rid of it, and let's get back in again. Yes. Paste. Lovely. So we're back in. Um, let's now do our YUM update because, of course, it's a brand new OS install. There you go, loads of packages to upgrade. I wanted to show you this while that's running in the background. This is our ping, do you remember? Our, um, our actual ping of our private IP address. So VLAN spanning is now all available, which is what we wanted. So that's good news too. So we have VLAN spanning available, we're able to ping from externally, we can clearly SSH in from externally, and we can certainly ping externally. So everything's back the way it was, with the exception of our yum update, which now needs to finish, and then we can yum install um, git again and do our git clone. So that'll take you know a couple of more minutes to run through the yum update, and then we're going to start uh, viing um, the actual allow scripts. Now, while that's running through, so I might as well wait and let that just run through, what we're going to edit first is we're going to actually edit allow minus SSH minus ping. Because we want to make sure we still have access to the machine externally um, and that we're able to get into it from my Mac. So we're going to run that to make sure that we continue to have access to then add the other things that we're going to want on this test machine uh, as a test of our IP tables. So, you know, the easiest way is to make sure that you dive in, I guess, at the ping plus SSH. Now, you could reduce it to just SSH and get rid of ping altogether as well, and that's perfectly fine. But what I'm going to do is actually cover using allow SSH ping as our base because we've just experienced what happens when you do get it wrong and you don't want to have to keep uh, reinstalling the machine, albeit it only wastes six to eight minutes of your time. Um, the bigger problem is if we had made loads of changes. Well, there we go. That's lovely. So now we can do a yum install of git. Yes. And then we can do our git clone of 
https uh, github.com aemon whoops aemon killian ip tables oops it won't find that one ip tables lovely see the ip tables okay let's get going on uh, editing this file so we're back in and which file are we going to choose? Oh, I've just been talking about it. Allow SSH ping. So we've written these purposely to make this easy. What's it going to do first? Well, first it's going to flush those policy tables. Let's go and have a look at our policy tables. How are they at the moment? They're back at default. Accept, accept, accept. No exceptions to the rules, just fully wide open. That's what we'd expect. So again, we're going to float down and we're going to see it's going to flush those rules first and it's going to implement new rules for drop, drop and drop. So it's total lockdown achieved. That's fine. We're happy with that. It's then going to do the loopback interface. Again, we're happy with that. Happy to leave that because we might add some services that will need that. It certainly doesn't uh, decrease the security uh, in any way in terms of what we're doing. Next up, public interface. So our allowed host is the first thing that we're going to want to edit. So our allowed host is my external IP address here, which happens to be at the moment 86.159.197. That's my current external facing IP address. That may well change as DNS cycles, and you know certainly by the time this video goes out, it, it'll probably be well and truly in, in the dust. Um, but that's my current external IP address. Now, we are gonna now set an exception to the drop, and we did this before, on the public interface. Well, the public interface is ETH1. And we're gonna allow ICMP echo requests on ETH1. We're also going to allow those replies. So that's the public inbound pin is now enabled. Okay? From one host only. So currently it's any host can ping this. We're resetting the policy to drop everything except for 86.159.1. So only that machine will be allowed to send a ping and get a response. Then on the private interface, we did have a range of 10.0.2.15. Well, I'm going to change that now to be 10.0.0.0. because our private address is on the 10.136. So I want to allow, in fact, I'm gonna go even broader than that. I'm gonna allow everything on 10.0.0.0 slash zero. I'm going to change this to be minus S. So that will allow anyone on the 10 network, which is internal only. And this is on ETH0, the private address. Now I'm not too worried if that doesn't actually work for us. I've changed the range into a, a straightforward minus S for source, but that's on the private. The public is the key one for us because that's what we're using the SSH in. Then we have outbound, so an exception to outbound, allowing output of ping requests. So that's fine again as well. We don't need to change anything there. And then finally, on the public interface, which is ETH1, we're going to allow 
our dollar allowed, we're going to accept SSH requests from our allowed host. And the same on the output, where the source port is 22, we're going to accept outbound communication on the public IP port, on the NIC interface for ETH1, we're going to allow it to talk to my public IP address. Make sense? I'm being very, very careful on this one. And then on the private interface, which is ETH0 in our instance here, I'm again going to say that the source is 10 0 0 0 slash 0. And down below, 10 0 0 0 slash 0. And it's not a destination range, it's minus D for destination. Whoops, minus D. Good, and might as well just change the comment while we're here. Lovely. Public SSH. Then we're going to save the tables and restart. Okay. So let me do that. Let me now do an IF config again. Our private network is ETH0. Our public network is ETH1. What I want to treble check before I do our run of this is I want to check our SSH and ping from the public IP address. So public interface allowed is my host here, 86.159.197, fine. Inbound interface, ETH1, that is indeed our public IP address, our IP NIC, is going to allow this host, and it's going to respond. That's fine. Pings should work. I'm going to allow public outbound, that's fine again. This is the key one. IP tables minus A input. Inbound interface, ETH1. Protocol is TCP. And I'm double checking this with our IP addresses. All the time, just making double, treble, quadruple sure. All the time. So it's minus minus interface ETH1 minus protocol ICMP. Now we've done the ICMP, TCP. The destination port is 22. The source is my 86159 address and it's accepted. And on the out interface, we could make this the out interface just to be absolutely sure. ETH1 minus P TCP minus minus source port is 22 minus destination is the allowed host again. I just wanted to treble check that. I don't mind if the private is gone, I can fix that because I can still get back in. Whoops. Undo. Okay. Let's run it. <laughs> no time like the presence. It will either fail or it will work. Are we still in? We are still in. Yeah, I've had a failure on the private, but my public stuff's working fine. Yeah, we're still in on the machine. That's what we wanted to see. So, let's just double check the public one. Can I ping the public IP address? I can. It's still working. 
Why is that still working? That shouldn't be the case. Oh, of course it's working because we allowed it from my public IP address. Of course we did. That's absolutely fine. So that should be working. Can we ping it, more importantly, from the public IP address of Sassify Vault? No, which is exactly what we wanted. So I can't get in from my other, this is my other virtual machine in software. I can't get to it. I can't even ping it. So that's absolutely fine. That's what we would want to have happen. Can I SSH it? Well, we know we can because we're already in here, but just for the purposes of, uh, of TV, um, SSH root at, and there we go. And if I still have the password in here, yes, I do. So we're in. So now we've done the hard bit. We're still in publicly. Now we need to fix that private error that was happening when we actually ran the, uh, the program. So what's going wrong here? This is on the private stuff. Private SSH access for 10 enabled. Yeah. So let's go in and edit that and see if we can make that a bit more tidy. Because at the moment, can we ping it from our private IP address? No. And we were able to ping it. Remember up here a second ago, we were able to ping it. So we're not able to ping it on the private IP address. So let's VI and see what's happening there. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's just have a quick look at the error again. You must specify a source range or a destination range. Okay, so this is about the source and destination. It's okay. So let's run up first to the private interface for pinging. Here we go. Ah, so I've told it it's a minus IP range. So that's what's going wrong there. Let's just run it again. See what happens. Yeah. So now let's fix that one. And this was the simplest of fixes because I've already told it it's a range. And it's not a range anymore. It's a set of source hosts on a particular network rather than a specific source destination range. So there we go. Whoops. And this one as well. Okay, that should be all our errors gone, and they're gone. So now, let's uh, ping it, and there we go. We can ping on the private. Can we ping on the public? No, that's what we wanted. So it's exactly what we did. So within a couple of clicks, and I know I took my time through this video, because this you have to be careful with this stuff. You can easily lock out like I did in the part just before this. If you get it wrong, you could easily lock yourself out. It's worth taking the time. But what you can see there is we very, very quickly have a totally locked down server with the exception of allowing SSH in from one IP address only. Nobody else can get in externally. Not even other machines on software. But conversely, we, by enabling VLAN spanning, and allowing access on the 10 network, which is an internal only to software network. I mean, there'll be lots and lots of 10 networks out there. I don't want to make it sound like they've reserved 10. 10 is what people use for the internal networks a lot of times. Uh, you'll find a 10 network on a class A or a class B172. But 10 network, allow it. Allow anyone on the 10. And that's fine. We may want to change that and have it as our only our machines, in which case change the 10.000 slash zero to be the IP address of the actual host you will want to allow on the private network, VLAN spanning or no VLAN spanning. So that's it for this part. 
join me and we'll add a couple of the more services and edit this file to build it out to add a few more services like HTTP etc. Thanks very much.